Okay, here we go. <laughs> life as we know it, or do we know it? In fact, life itself is the greatest mystery of humankind. From the beginning, humans have been studying and pondering why we are here and how our universe works. Although any possible explanation we come up with is, of course, just a theory. A concept known as string theory has proven to be quite solid in the physics, mathematical, and scientific world. The string theory, in short, explains that everything is composed and unified by vibrating quantum strings. Along with this theory is the concept that everything is compacted within ten dimensions. Understanding these ten dimensions is certainly not an easy task. Human beings, as we know, perceive the world in three dimensions. What we do not realize is that our lives interact with every dimension below and above the third. In order to grasp the complex concept of the higher dimensions, we must first visually perceive the dimensions below and understand that each dimension thereafter is a new direction. Let's look at the first dimension. We start with a point, like a coordinate on a graph, which we connect to another point, creating a line. This dimension contains only length and no other direction. Movement is only capable along this line. Next, we cross this line with another line, which creates the second dimension. Now movement is possible in both length and width. The second dimension can be thought of as an endlessly flat, thin surface in which we can move up, down, left, and right. In a popular video by Rob Bryanson called Imagining the Tenth Dimension, he portrays a being who only perceives the world in two dimensions, which is referred to as a flatlander. Imagine yourself as a flatlander, and you're moving across a three-dimensional sphere. In your perspective, you would travel in a straight line until you ended up in the same spot you left from. Um, in reality, you'd be twisting through the third dimension around the sphere, even though you only perceived it as a straight line. With that in mind, let's move into the third dimension. Once again, a new direction is added to the equation, and now an object has depth as well as length and width. We are, of course, able to perceive this dimension, but what we do not realize is that we are actually twisting through and folding through the second dimension, as opposed to moving on a straight line across the plane. Now let's look back at the Flatlander moving along the three-dimensional sphere. He's perceived this as a straight line, despite the fact that he was actually moving through the third dimension. The fourth dimension is the same concept for us three-dimensional creatures. The fourth dimension is duration, or as we know it, time. If we're able to view our bodies in the fourth dimension, what we would appear as long, snake-like objects with ourselves at birth on one end and ourselves at death at the other. Similar to the Flatlander traveling across the third dimension, we also twist and turn across the fourth dimension, although we, are moving, we perceive it as moving in a straight line. Now we can see that our world is composed of length, width, duration, and depth. As we move into the higher dimensions, directions are still added to the equation, yet now they become probabilities rather than spatial directions. The fifth dimension can be thought of as a colossal amount of paths in which we will take according to our decisions, our interactions of the world, and their interactions of everyone we share our lives with. 
As these paths unfold, different paths become impossible, new outcomes are presented, and once again it appears that you are moving in a straight line in the fourth dimension, your timeline. As the fifth dimension is the path in which your life unfolds, the sixth dimension becomes a direction in which you can travel from one state of existence to another state of existence where completely different outcomes have occurred. Everything that could have happened and has happened is in the sixth dimension. The mind-boggling aspect of this dimension is that each possible outcome is taking place simultaneously in a different version of reality. The sixth dimension as a whole we can consider to be the infinity of our universe. Although we are taught that nothing is beyond infinity, the seventh dimension does just that. Not only is there an infinite amount of outcomes for our universe, but there is also an infinite amount of initial ways our universe can be formed, creating different laws of physics for that universe, therefore creating a whole new set of infinite outcomes. The seventh dimension, therefore, is a path from one universe to another universe. Try to picture it like the first dimension for now, as it moves along a line between one point to another. Picturing the seventh dimension as if it were the first dimension allows for an easier view of the eighth. The eighth dimension is like the second dimension in that alternate universes are connected on a single plane where movement is once again up, down, left, or right. Now keep this in mind for the ninth dimension, which you will think as if it were the third, as now you can reach any alternate universe by folding through the eighth dimension. This is the same concept as the third dimension, and that the second dimension is folded like a piece of paper, creating a shortcut to different coordinates. The ninth dimension, instead, is a shortcut between every alternate universe. Now we must treat everything as one point, the tenth dimension. The tenth dimension can be simply summed up in that it contains every possible universe in every possible state. At this level, the string theory predicts that superstrings create the subatomic particles used to create every universe and every possibility within them. Everything therefore is contained within the tenth dimension, a dimension that holds every universe with every outcome at any point of time, an infinite amount of infinities. Thank you.